Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Ace is high. Uh, today, I'm bringing you guys some more Lost in the Pond. I really like this guy. I know he's he's kind of dry, and it's not for everyone. If it's not for you, man, I get it. You guys can shut it off right now. No big deal. I'm going to have some more videos posted later that aren't going to be by him. Um, but if you dig him like I do, then uh, stay tuned, all right? So uh, first off, there's a link to his channel in the description. If you guys like it, go sub to him, seriously. Great channel, great content. Um, and it, while you're at it, hit that sub button for me. Help me get to that 2K mark. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, uh, this one is going to be four ways that British and American houses are very different. Um, so, I don't know, I just I think it's really interesting. What makes up an American house? I mean, most American houses have at least two, ba uh, two bathrooms. Most American houses have minimum three bedrooms, minimum. Uh, they have a laundry room, they have a kitchen. I mean, all the basic stuff. Uh, I guess the roofs, maybe. It depends on where you live. California and the desert have, like, tile roofs. Up here, we have asphalt shingle roofs. Uh, some places have metal roofs. Um, what else is different? I don't know. Multiple stories most of the time. My, my house right here, it's, uh, it's actually only one story, but it's a four-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath, so it's not too bad. And I have a laundry room, and I have a separated garage, so... Anyway, uh, I'm going to sit back, I'm going to shut up, go grab yourself a drink, and let's get going. And tea drinkers that we are, we love our kettles, don't we? But they're not just any kettles. These are ones you plug in and then hit the switch to turn on the plug, because I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches. Hmm. I do have an electric tea kettle in my kitchen. Cover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the But that's for coffee. Memos pertains to houses, the things we live inside. If if you're watching this video, it's quite likely you're either inside a house right now or you're near one because otherwise you wouldn't probably have internet access quite as easily to anyone that might be new to this. Channel, uh, what about your phone? Come on in, get yourself a cup of tea. I'm, this isn't a genuine offer to come into my house. I'm just saying, join the channel, <laughs> this is good. And hello to everybody who's been here a long time. Today we're going to look at several ways in which British and American houses are very, very different. Having lived in the United States for over 11 years, I've lived in... 11 years? Houses here, just as I did. But it's in the Midwest. So I think I have a decent grasp of how houses work. Even tiny ones like this one, which is about 400 square feet. I'm joking, this is a professional studio. Don't question me. And so without further ado, let's take a look at four ways that British and American houses are very, very different. Alright. Neither Britain nor America is devoid of variety when it comes to their housing styles. And that's because, well, with each sort of passing phase of history comes new designs to meet new needs and just new style preferences. And because of this variety, I'm not going to cover every single one of them because that would keep us all here until next Wednesday. Which would be good for my metrics, but not good for your sound. <laughs> so let's take a look at how some of the housing styles do vary from country to country. In Britain, a lot of the distinctive styles are also tied up with the period in which they were built. So you can go all the way back to the Tudor period, and you do find Tudor housing dotted around here and there. In fact, if you go to the city of York, for example, there's quite a lot of sort of Tudor buildings there. They're quite ornate with hmm. paneling. And that Makes sense. We're a newer country, so we don't have that many well, old buildings. It's less indicative of British houses than you would see in America, where wood is actually quite a common material right. for building houses. In Britain, from about the Georgian period onward, you're going to see quite a lot of brickwork. Uh, Georgian period houses absolutely exist. People live in them, but they tend to be these opulent-looking houses that to have notable pots of white rectangle, which are just the windows. See, that's, uh, that's interesting, because again, like I was saying, different parts of the country are different things. Uh, my family in Tennessee, all the houses there, or most of them, are brick. Uh, my house is actually, uh, the frame is made out of cinder blocks, the uh, interior and the roof and everything is made out of wood. So mine's kind of a, a combination, you know? Very nice. They look like doll's houses that you should live in. But then come the Victorian age, we started moving toward these sort of like orangey brick buildings, right? And a lot of them were terraced houses, which is what Americans would call row houses. And they just look very industrial, right? You could imagine or townhouses, is what we'd call them. Face and then we move into the Edwardian period, where houses are sort of similar to those of the Victorian age. They're just lighter colours with more chimney sweeps, with Mary Poppins or anything to go by. Looks like and a stucco house. When the Nazis bombed the ever-loving crap out of us, a lot of the houses went boom. And then after World War II, there was a housing boom. And you started to see a build-up of new, more simple houses, kind of like the one I grew up in. You know, that, that's a castle. That didn't happen. Um, but I, did, I grew up in something more like this. 
Okay, that makes sense. Still brick, though. Despite what fairy tales may suggest, most of us have never lived in a chocolate box house, but those do exist. A chocolate box house is the kind of house you might see in the Cotswolds, right? It's very quaint looking. The hell's the Cotswold? And it looks like this. And oh, okay. I'm wondering why it's called a chocolate box house, yet it doesn't look edible. It goes back to the 1950s slash 60s when chocolate boxes would have on their facade a kind of depiction of a beautiful English countryside. And these types of houses would often feature on said box. Now, again, this is by no means an entire repository of British houses. Um, neither is the following an entire repository of American houses. It's just the, the more common ones that you will see when you are here. So Cape Cod houses, you know these types of houses, right? They're the ones with the wood paneling down the side. And I said a moment ago that, you know, America makes good use of wood in this country. Because there's just so Oh, good. yeah. We got tons of wood. Woodlands around the country, and it's a huge country from which to pull that resource, so they do, and it's cheap. But funnily enough, the Cape Cod style has its history with English settlers who came here in the 17th century and started building Cape Cod style houses in New England. Now, during the post World War II period, partly to provide you know housing to veterans coming back from war, there was a revival of Cape Cod style housing. And it started to be built not just in New England, but all along the East Coast and in the Midwest, and even out West. Anybody that's seen the Goonies will know that. And it was True. Style of housing that Fantastic I movie. When I moved to the Although Astoria, so, not a fan. Despite the Midwest winters, it was really warm. You know, you'd think it'd be quite drafty because of all of the gaps in the woods. You could go to specific streets or neighborhoods or areas of the United States and only find these houses for miles. Well, I mean, to be fair, all the gaps in the wood are filled. I mean, you have insulation, you have all kinds of stuff to stop the wind, you know? So I lived in one of those, but my grandparents-in-law lived in what is known as a ranch-style house. And these are sort of really low yeah. houses, don't typically have two floors to them. And once again, these houses became popular after World War II. There was generally a big sort of boom after World War II. That's kind of the style of my house. In that regard. Uh, the 20th century, though, did see more and more revivalism of old styles. So you had, you know, mock Tudor, or shall I say revival Tudor, um, which more or less replicated the kind of Tudor buildings that you would see in England with some differences. And I've seen those types of buildings in Boston, for example. I've also seen them in Indiana. As well as that, the 20th century saw colonial revival. Oh, tons. Oh, my God. That building... Here, let's... Yeah. Uh, as well as that, the 20th century saw colonial... Right there. That reminds me of every single sitcom I watched when I was growing up. I mean, it reminds me of, like, the house that Fresh Prince of Bel-Air would be filmed in. And, and uh, I don't know freaking Cosby show or whatever you know every show that you watched the family lived in this type of a house uh oh uh home alone the kid he lived in this type of a house it was the same thing way too many freaking windows wait it, like it's just ridiculous you know why do you need that many windows one two three four what is that plus five is nine plus four it's another 13 plus this big thing like come on and that's just on the front Maybe one day when I get that grand piano, I'll, I'll think about it. And so that's an extremely that would be cool. rudimentary breakdown of some of the different styles that you'll see in each country. But there's one big, big difference between all of the houses in both countries, and it's this. Let's face it, it's time to... Oh, uh, we have more space. Ours is bigger. Britain is microscopic. The United States is absolutely massive and needs to be stopped. And this So before he gets into size... I actually have a small house, and my uh, my house is 1,380 square feet. A typical new house nowadays is about 2,000 square feet, uh, and they get a hell of a lot bigger than that. Um, but again, my house was built in 1952 or something like that. It's an older house, uh, and I say older compared to you know some of the British houses, not even close to old. But 1952 house is pretty old for uh, for around here. The same is true of each country's average house size, right? So in the United States, houses just tend to be way more spacious. And we're not, we're not just talking about millionaire houses here. We're talking about your average house. So the average size of an American single-family home is approximately 1,600 square feet in the UK. I can see that. Looking at an average of about 900 square 900? feet. 900? 900 is like a one-bedroom apartment here. Like, I'm not even kidding. Jesus Christ, that's tiny. I mean, you're practically living in a studio, you know? I wonder I wonder if he's going to cover the cost. He'll probably cover the cost, but uh, I have no problem sharing this. My house is valued at 300 and I think it was $320,000 or something like that, uh, U.S. dollars. Um, and again, it's 
it's a beat up old 1952 house. It's not a new one. If I go out and buy a you know four bedroom house that's new, it's going to cost me seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars right now. If I get a good deal, it's going to be six hundred thousand. Well, one reason is population density. In I also live in an expensive part of the country. Actually, that partially accounts for why everything is smaller in Britain. Not everything. <laughs> the cops. But in America, there's just so much land and relative... That was a small so cut. Few people. So, you know, make them as large as you want. And they do. They're huge. But also, a large majority of American houses are relatively new. Meaning that they were able to benefit from, you know, building methods and materials that other countries like Britain were not. And the post-war expansion of American highways meant that this was enhanced even True. More. Those materials could be moved around the country more easily, and of course this ushered in... The interstate system was huge. ...housing development. Now, all size aside, try saying that after 10 tepid tequilas, things become subtly different once you're inside the houses of either country. The Is gadgets. the right word? I don't know. I'll have to fire my graphics team. Either way, we're essentially talking about accessories, the things you have in your house that make that house hmm. work. Even a clock? In the house. I don't know. So, for example, air somewhere to put your shoes. Bigger on its overhead fans and air conditioning units. We don't. We don't usually. Use yeah. Those. I mean, we like to punish ourselves, especially in the summer. But we can crack a window open, and it doesn't get oppressively hot. To be fair, it depends on where you are. We don't use ACs in Washington. It does mean that insects get in. So, Daddy Longlegs will get in the house, and mosquitoes. But it's a small price to pay for not having air conditioning. I actually quite like air conditioning. Speaking of insects, you also don't see in Britain those insect screens that you put in the windows. Hence what? Why? In. in America, they're virtually in every house. But then, yes. you know, in Britain, we don't have black widows or brown recluses or the types of mosquitoes that make your face go like this. So I oh, my God. Justified. I mean, you still get ants, or is that just me? Not sure how oh, my maybe God. Maybe cracks in the wall, or maybe I sprayed around my entire house to try to get them out. In both countries, too. In Britain, you have the three-pronged outlets, and in America, you sometimes have three, but occasionally two. Eh. To be fair, as far as the two goes, uh, the two were just uh, our basic two plugs. We don't do that anymore. Everything has three nowadays. If you have two, it's an older plug. Um, it should have the three because it should have that uh, dedicated ground. Whereas beforehand, one of those two prongs uh, actually went to the neutral. And uh, that the neutral was grounded, you know. But uh, it's, uh, it's not as safe of a ground, so they added in that dedicated ground. So anyway, nowadays, all of our plugs have three. Smaller in America than they are in Britain. That's one of the few things about which you can say that. Uh, separate taps, of course, for hot and cold water. Americans combine them all into one. Where's the logic in that? You have separate taps. And while we're on the subject of sinks, um, most British sinks really? have that sort of food waste disposal thing that you press the button. A garbage disposal. Amazing. That was one of the best things I discovered after the. Yeah, so you could just throw it down. Somebody else came up with the idea, and I just used it. But it's amazing. It's just so pleasing to know that all of that gunk gets broken down, and just don't put your hamster in there. That's, I've learned that lesson from someone else. I didn't do it, just read about it on Reddit. Letterboxes, firstly, Americans don't call them letterboxes, but mailboxes, and typically oh, yeah, yeah. have them on the door, but outside in the garden. On the street, the yeah. The garden slash yard is different, often smaller in Britain, but very well kept up, depending on the family. And just massive yards here with, you know, mesh fences and things like that. Yeah, I have a pretty big yard. Back inside, a lot of properties in the United States will have walk in closets that are built into the. Yeah, of course, so you can pile your house. stuff. Whereas in Britain, you bring your own closet slash wardrobe. To put your clothes in. Really? That, that takes up more space. You don't even have like a little closet? So even if you don't have a walk-in closet, we have like a little, uh, for instance, in this room, I'm in my, in my office right now. Uh, this door leads out to my hallway. Um, but directly this way, uh, off camera, I've actually got a little closet here. And even though this is the smallest bedroom in the house, it still has a closet that's probably three feet by three feet. You know? Um, it's not a walk-in, but it's a full closet. We're shooting ourselves in the foot every step of the way. Except when it comes to washing machines and dryers. How what do you mean? Is this? We combine them both into one giant cube, whereas America has two separate cubes. And tea drinkers that... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a thing? They make washers and dryers that are together? Unless he's talking about the stacked ones. Because we have the stacked ones, but they're typically smaller, and we put them in apartments. You know? Uh, if that's not what he's talking about, he's talking about like actually one small machine, not a stacked one where you still have to move them, and it's a washer and dryer. That's amazing, and I don't know why we don't do that, and I feel like an idiot for not knowing. 
that we are. We love our kettles, don't we? But they're not just any kettle. These are ones you plug in. And yeah, electric kettles. To turn on the plug, because I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches. And then, hmm. you know, you turn it on. Don't need a stove top, and it heats up. Just like that. Yeah, I have that too in my kitchen for coffee. In America, you do have the stove top kettles, and part of me likes that because it... I have that too. Amazing whistling sound at the end. Now, if you were paying attention during that list, you may have noticed that I touched on some of the terminological differences when it comes to housing in either country. And that brings us on to our final entry. The words, it huh? Wouldn't be Britain and America, oh, like a garage and a garage. And a garage. The same is true of the housing world. So let's finish with a rapid fire round looking at those very words. So here in Chicago, I live in a flat. Except in America, they don't call it flat. It's called an apartment. Something else that you'll find in America True. are these condoms. I just said apartment. Condos, if you yeah. Don't saying a word that has condom in it. And we do have those in Britain. They're just they're usually called common hold properties. And I suppose okay. British people wouldn't go around. There's also townhouses. You actually hear the term condo quite a lot. It's been suggested to me that I move into a condo, and it sounds good. I mean, when I first heard the term, I thought I was, it sounded like it's I'm not bad. For a lakeside boat or something like that. It is like an apartment, but it's one you would buy. It's real estate. Now, as a child and young adult, I grew up in a house that was known as a semi-detached house. That's when you have a house adjoined to one other house on one side. Oh, that's a townhouse. In the United States, this is known quite simply as a duplex, which is not. A oh. If it is adjoined on both sides. If if it's just two, it's a duplex. Side with another house, then you are part of a line of houses that are known as terraced houses in Britain. In America, they're known as row houses because they're all in a row, presumably. Then there's council housing in Britain versus... I would call it a townhouse. States, and that's just another way of saying public housing. To control the electricity flow in Britain, you have the mains power. In America, you have the grid power. And right. what if you're sick and tired of the place that you're living in and you just want to relocate somewhere else? In America, you would just simply move. In Britain, you'd move house. And on that note, I'm going to move, move house. To my outro transition. You're not moving your house, though. Let me know in the You're just moving everything in it. I'm going to move. I'm moving and I'm bringing my property with me. Leave a comment either way. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big reminder, by the way, if you want to keep up with me on a day to day basis and just see some of the I like this guy. Follow me on Twitter. Alright, we're going to move over. Uh, I do, I do really, really like him. I like his videos. Um, I'm liking everything he's putting out. So, uh, there will be a link in the description. Go follow him. Uh, go subscribe to him, you guys. I think you'll like him. Um, but anyway, hope y'all duck it. Till next time, this is Ace is High. And I'm out.